are the roads in the skies? How do pilots know where to fly, when to fly, how to fly away? Today we take some of these questions that have been sent to us by some of our viewers. My name is Angel Rutiri and welcome back to channel because all things aviation. We know that aircraft fly through what you call an airspace. And airspace is a body of air. You know, it's a body of air that each country controls. Because you know that each state is sovereign. And all states have what you call sovereign equality or the equal sovereignty of states. So each state, as much as it is responsible for the land on which that state exists, is also responsible for the air above that particular land. So that is the airspace we're dealing with. It has both lateral limits and vertical limits. In other words, the airspace of a particular uh, state could begin from the ground level all the way up to the highest uh, level we can go where aviation is possible in the uh, atmosphere. So this block of air that states control have classifications from class A to class G. These classifications are made by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, and each state will take those classifications and adapt them to the local conditions on the ground. So in other words, although these classifications are there from A to G, you'd find that in any one particular state, there may not be all these classifications at the same time. For instance, Africa does not have what we call class E airspace. We have all the other classes, but not class E. So each state will take the classification of airspaces and apply it in the local context in order to, you know, to suit the prevailing needs of that particular state in as far as it wants to roll out its airspace management. There are two main categories of uh, airspace classification. There's what we call controlled airspace and what we call uncontrolled airspace. So controlled airspace is classified from class A to class E. Uncontrolled airspace is covered by classes F to class G. Now, where do you find this information about the airspace you're about to fly into? You could consult what you call aeronautical information publications, AIPs, or what you call aeronautical information circulars, AICs, or the supplements to these particular publications. And you will find the, the various classifications of the airspace in any particular territory that you're going to be flying through. You could also consult your charts, the aviation charts that you see here. Um, but remember, for charts, it's critical to see the date of publication of that particular chart because charts have a tendency to be outdated. Remember, this is a paper that's printed out. And if there's an airspace change or a regulation change after the publication date, then that means you are already using an outdated chart and you may find yourself contravening the regulations of that particular state. Now, there are two types of charts that you could use. The sectional and BFR chart, which, is, which usually has a scale of 1 is to 500,000. Or you could also use what we call the WEC chart, the World Aeronautical Chart, which has a scale of 1 is to 1 million. Now, let's look at Class A airspace. What kind of flights take place there? Now, Class A airspace will probably happen above what you call flight level 200, plus minus 20,000 feet, flight level 200. Here you can expect, if you're flying through that airspace, you can expect to get yourself ATC service but no VFR flights are permitted in that airspace. So not flights that are um, actually flown by way of, you know, a, a visual contact with the area ahead of you where you're going to fly. If, if, if you're using VFR um, rules for your flight, then you cannot necessarily enter Class A airspace. It's only for, uh, for IFR flights, instrument flight rules uh, flights only permitted in Class A airspace. This separation that is given to this type of flights is all flights in that space are separated. There's separation that's afforded to them. Um, traffic advisory, not applicable in that particular airspace. Now, Class B airspace, both IFR flights and VFR flights are permitted. In other words, flights that are taking place under instrument flight rules and flights that are taking place under uh, visual flight rules are permitted in Class B airspace. Now, separation is given to all flights in that particular scenario and there is no traffic advisor that is given. So these flights will normally take place below flight level 200 and in the case of a CTR. And what services will they get here? They will get air traffic control service. All flights flying through this airspace will be provided with air traffic control um, services. Now let's look at Class C. Class C also allows both IFR and VFR flights. Separation is given 
in this particular manner. IFR flights are separated from other IFR flights. And then IFR flights are also separated from other, from, from correction, from VFR flights when they are flying through this particular airspace. Traffic advisory is provided to all VFR flights. In other words, flights that are using v visual flight rules going through this class C airspace will be provided with um, traffic advisory services. Now, all controlled airspace below flight level 200 falls into this category and there they will get ATC service. Flights going through this particular area will get ATC service. Class C is the most common um, class of airspace in South Africa. But one thing to note with Class C airspace is that VFR flights are not separated from other VFR flights. That is why a pilot flying through this particular area needs to be vigilant to keep a lookout for other traffic in that particular area. Now Class D airspace, here both VFR and IFR flights are permitted and separation is given in the following sense. IFR flights are separated from IFR flights. Now, class D airspace relates to controlled airspace below flight level 200 in case of an aerodrome traffic zone. Services that are provided uh, under class D airspace are number one, information about VFR flights in the area and traffic avoidance advice on requests. So in other words, the pilot must request that then they will be given that information on traffic avoidance. All these classes that I've just listed, from A to B to C to D, fall under our controlled airspace. Remember we said that uh, class E is not available in South Africa, so we're not going to discuss that. But in all these airspaces, flights occurring therein require ATC clearance before they can make any maneuvers. Classes F and G, remember we said, are uncontrolled airspaces and therefore no ATC clearance is required before an aircraft actually traverses this particular airspace. VFR and VFR flights are required and there's no, prior, there's no need for prior clearance to be given before traversing this particular airspace. Class F comprises all advisory airspace, what we classify as advisory airspace in South Africa. Services that are provided here include air traffic advisory service as well as uh, flight information service. All flights can request traffic advisory services and if possible these will be given to that particular um, aircraft flying through class F airspace. Class G comprises of all information airspaces, what we call information airspace. Services that are given in this particular airspace include flight information service. When you look at the two classes of airspace we've just discussed you realize that classes A, C, and D, you require permission before you can enter those airspaces. You need to file a flight plan before you enter that airspace. You need to maintain two-way radio communications while you are flying through that particular airspace. In the beginning, we asked the question, is there a rod in the sky? How do pilots know where they are flying or how they should get there? Now, there are things called airways in the sky, which, to use a layman's term, you could call it a rod. It's not necessarily a rod, but it's a demarcation of the airspace, the body of airspace that you could use, both with vertical limits and lateral limits. In other words, as long as you position yourself within that particular airspace, you can follow that flight route all the way to your destination. So an airway is defined as a corridor connecting one location to another. So airways are classified into two. Basically, there's what you call an airway, which could move from the ground up to flight level 180 or what we call an upper airway, designated on the charts and on aviation uh, forms as UA, Uniform Alpha. That, move, that um, you know, takes the space from flight level 180 to flight level 450. The way this works, pilots utilize what we call waypoints. They also utilize nav aids, navigation aids that are there along the route. Pilot, the pilot in this particular instance will use what you call VOR and DME, distance measuring equipment. These are instruments that the pilot would use to maintain accuracy during flight along that particular airway. So they'll measure the distance they are from a particular DME and the bearing they are from a particular VOR. And then they know if they're within that particular airway or 
they've strayed away from the area. That in layman's terms can be understood as an aerial road, you know, as a highway. But it is more complex than that. It's not just a road. <laughs> it's not like the N1 or the N2 or the N3. It, it's an airway. It's a road in the sky that a pilot will follow using the navigation aids I've just talked about, the VOR and the DMP, for them to maintain accuracy in their uh, flight. We've come to the end of this discussion on airspaces or airspace classifications in South Africa. I hope that was informative. We will, in the coming few weeks, be rolling out a competition, an exciting competition on this platform. Stay with us because in the next few weeks, probably in the month of February, we'll begin rolling out that particular competition. You can win for yourself, you can be excited. Stay with us. I urge you to continue to support the channel, to continue to share this channel with us. And remember our mantra stands even in 2021 that with every hour you come to the records, therefore, whatever it is that you are engaging in, whatever it is you're investing the time and money in, make sure that you're getting up those hours. For every hour counts, every hour takes closer to your goal. So keep adding those hours, whatever it is that you are doing. Don't forget to look out for future episodes in this channel. It's exciting to bring more content into your Until next time, you